Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And now, the champion, fighting out of Los Angeles, California. This man is a movie snob with a background in fighting and a lifelong addiction to all things superhero related. Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed host of the show, The Iron Cube. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 85 of The Iron Coop Fights Movies. This week, the team reviews Doctor Strange, followed by movie television and video game news. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we award what we've watched with a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't necessarily love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. If you have not seen the review of the week and would like to avoid spoilers, check the show notes for the timestamp so you can still hear our news sections. This week we're going to watch uh, an older film by modern standards. Um, Doctor Strange. So this is the introduction of the Sorcerer Supreme into the MCU. His origin story. Um, He's since appeared a couple more times. Everett, what's your rating on this? Uh, it's definitely a win, but I mean, I already knew that. I love this movie more than anything. I think it's very artistically driven. I think the art style is phenomenal. The acting is amazing. The writing is phenomenal. Just this movie is really, really great, in my opinion. All right, Emerson? Um, I'm also going to give it a win for everything Everett said. Also, a lot of the combat and uh, the big set pieces you're viewing, it's different than what we normally see in a Marvel movie, which is fantastic because, you know, When I saw Doctor Strange the first time and when I saw it this time, I had gotten used to a very different sense of Marvel action and what it was going to be. But especially the scenes where the buildings are moving, the cities are shifting, you see this almost um, Inception-like battle. Really amazing, so definitely a win for me. Yeah, this is a win for me as well. Um, I think the movie is better now than when it came out. Why? Um, well, so if you remember, when this movie came out, there was a lot of talk about casting. And Benedict Cumberbatch, um, he he was cast kind of late in the game, if I recall correctly. Do you guys remember that? Vaguely. He he wasn't like it wasn't it wasn't like Brie Larson where it's like. Because they, you know, Brie Larson was going to be in Infinity War or whatever, Endgame or whatever, where they had to kind of cast her way in advance to sort of know what the hell they were doing. This was like, they're making Doctor Strange. They know what they want to do with Doctor Strange, but they don't have a Doctor Strange. So the movie went into production, and then Benedict Cumberbatch kind of did it in between projects. Did, were you guys aware of that? No. Some I think something like that. He shot like he was playing some other character, maybe Sherlock Holmes. I don't remember what he was. He was like doing something else um, during this time, and then that ended. And then he like sprinted over to Nepal and and, you know all those places, filmed it very quickly, his parts, and then was basically done. And then I'm sure he came back like later for reshoots or whatever. But um, so it was basically like. When you watch his performance, this isn't like... I'm not going to say he didn't prepare for it, but it, it is interesting to look back and knowing that he kind of like got off a plane and just was like, do Doctor Strange and, and in a short period of time. Like this is... That's literally him acting. He's not in the mind of the character. He's like... They gave him the script and he's just doing it. Like that's how good he is. Do you guys agree he's good in this? Oh, yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Great. I mean, I'm not saying he's the greatest of all time, but he's definitely not bad. Like, he does a great job. And I guess you probably wouldn't think too much about it unless you knew that he really didn't prepare for it the way that you would expect. For like a. Like, this is almost like. At the time, I don't know really where his celebrity status is now, but at the time, I think he was a little bit bigger than this movie. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, there. Well, there were a lot of like fan groups about him. He was extremely famous for Sherlock Holmes. Is he Sherlock Holmes or Doctor Who? Uh, Sherlock he's Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. He's yeah. never been Doctor Who. No, no. Okay, so it's just Sherlock then, I think. But I know he was like <clears throat> very well known, and I do remember that there were people who were saying like, "Why is he doing this?" Like there was almost a feeling of like, "Oh, it's his turn to do a superhero movie." Something yeah. like that, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, part of that, I think, is because he was in that Star Trek movie. Yeah. And he oh, wasn't God. so great there. Like, he was kind of miscast. Yeah. And and I think, like, it wasn't his acting. It was just, like, he, he was playing Khan, which is an, was an Indian guy before, wasn't he? Uh, the Wrath I of Khan. I the original. Wasn't it, like, Ricardo Montalban, but he was yeah, playing an Ricardo Indian Montalban. guy? Like an he actual, he, you know. He wasn't Indian. He was just like, like a conqueror, like sort of like. Yeah, but his name was Khan. He, he yeah. doesn't mean like the character's ethnicity. He means the actor's ethnic ethnicity. No, no, no. I mean the character's ethnicity. Oh, the character I, I don't think was Khan like... was ever supposed to be anything other than Caucasian white. Um, I wanna. I just wanna look this up now. Like I might be wrong, but. I don't. I don't remember Ricardo Montalban doing an Indian character. I don't know that he was like. He had like Indian sort of ethnicity, but not. It wasn't like direct or specific. Um, does Khan have a last name? <laughs> um, not that I know of. Tyrant well, just, Khan Noonien. Um, played by Ricardo Montalban. A uh, quarter of the earth during the eugenic wars re- revived from suspended animation. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to type in Khan Noonien's ethnicity. So yeah, his, his name is Khan Noonien Singh. Like S-I-N-G-H. That's Indian, isn't it? I mean, this is like Star Trek, and everything's the, supposed to sound like alien. In the two-volume The Eugenic Wars, The Rise and Fall of Khan Noonien Singh, Khan is depicted as a North Indian from a family really? of Sikhs. Khan is a title. His adoptive parents are from Chandigarh, Punjab, India, and are both eugenic scientists. Yeah, he's Indian. Oh, I actually didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So anyway, back to Doctor Strange. Um, so yeah, he like he was kind of miscast there. So I feel like some people were like he should stay away from these kinds of roles. Like he's almost too much of a classical actor. And I think when you watch his performance, you see that he he's got very like he has like a theater presence. He's really good for the drama, and he's not terrible at the comedy, but he's not really great at. Uh, like the world's ending. What are we gonna do? <laughs> like that kind of stuff, which is like the bones, meat and bones of every superhero film. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this movie, like, he was kind of right for the role because this movie, which is what what I'm trying to get to, is the first half. And we're just gonna talk spoilers here because anyone who listens to this, if you haven't seen it by now, like, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I don't know why you're listening to us, but um. The first half, not the first half, let's say the first third, the first act, uh, that's just this pure drama. Yeah. And I, I actually love that the most. That's my favorite it, part of the film. It is riveting. And what's interesting is he's a, he's an extremely likable character, but you can also very clearly see his flaws. He's got hubris. He is vain. Um, but at the same time, he's a genius. He's He's what a lot of people want to be. He's rich, successful, intelligent. Yeah. Um, He's also a huge douchebag. He is a douche, which I'm okay with that. But I like... Um, what, what's the... Okay, the opening scene in the movie is the ancient one fighting the... Uh, Caecilius the and the zealots. The zealots, yeah. Um, so the ancient one is fighting them, which I thought was pretty cool. Watching it in a, on a 4K TV, it's a blue... I didn't have the 4K version. It's a Blu-ray version on a 4K TV. Um, the, all the like environment changing stuff really look like CGI this time around. I I did not think that when I saw the movie, I saw it three times, I believe in the theater. 
Um, and I wasn't even a huge fan of it. I, I'm, I'm more of a fan of it now. But but like the, the tiles moving and all that, that didn't look so convincing on my TV this time for whatever reason. But anyway, um, I thought that was a pretty cool battle, like especially when it, how it introduces you to the mirror dimension and the portals, the sling wing portals. Um, that was pretty cool. And then it cuts, correct me if I'm wrong, it cuts to him performing surgery, right? Yeah, he's, uh, and it, it introduces the idea like he's listening to music and essentially playing Guess the Year and who it's by. Um, now, I, I thought that was an interesting way to to open it because the, as soon as that scene is over, he basically goes into another surgery scene. And yeah. this one has a completely different tone. And I, I understand that they both um, have a purpose. It's just for pacing issues. I was a little surprised. I was like, I, I kind of, for some reason, I remembered that the first one was like the good scene. And then... But really, the first one is him just being kind of a douche. Like he doesn't do anything remarkable. He's just mm-hmm. he's just kind of playing around. And then he comes out, and then he goes back in. And I'm like, oh, we're okay. We're gonna we're gonna go back twice in like two minutes. <laughs> but um, that second scene, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh yeah, really well done. And I love that moment when it goes silent. You hear the watch, and he says, "Please cover your watch." Like that's fantastic. I'm gonna I'm gonna one up you and say that the best moment. Is when he's when the watch thing happens, but the way um, Strange's eyes I just I just don't feel like saying Cumberbatch every time, but the way Strange like his eyes he's looking down, and then he like stops and looks up a certain way, I, and, and then he says, "Can you cover?" Like the movie waits like three seconds, and then he says, "Can you cover your watch?" I really like just the entire pacing of that moment. Um, and uh, that other guy, the, the like bad doctor, Nick, he, yeah. he's actually a pretty good actor. Um, he was in, oh, damn it, I can't remember. The, he, he's been in some like, he's been in some stupid stuff lately, actually. Let's look him up. Um, but he was, he was in a movie that was like Oscar nominated. Um, and I'm just saying that because in here he's kind of like the sidekick. But I think he's actually quite a bit more famous than that um it's michael stahlberg right yes i believe yeah yeah okay what's Um, what's like the big movie he was in it's a drama steve jobs trumbo uh call me by your name the shape of water okay call me by your name i remember him in that a serious man that's the one oh he was in men in black three what uh what was he in uh the shape of water was he the nice doctor um, it says... Or was he... He wasn't the bad one, was no, he? No, he wasn't the nice doctor. That was a... Or actually, maybe he was. I don't know. I think remember. he was, yeah. I think he was. Anyway, so, um, he gets kind of a small role here, considering how, how like, good of an actor he is. Um, the, the one part of that opening first act is the car accident, and I feel like that part... The car accident isn't as gripping as... I think it should be. And I think the number one reason is one, the movie fails to build a sense of like tension and dread because I don't know about you guys, literally anytime a character gets in a car in a movie, I get nervous. Cause I'm like, this is going to be a fucking car. Cause I don't like the big scary noise, you know, yeah. when it's like car accident. So I always get tense and I'm like, like sometimes they'll be arguing as part of the scene and I'm watching the guy driving and I'm like, he's not paying attention. But in reality, like that's, like it's because they're acting and it's just a movie, but yeah. then sometimes it does happen. Like they're arguing, <laughs> so I'm always, I'm always on the edge. And this movie doesn't really make us feel like he's swerving, you know. And I think that the movie might be a little bit better if they telegraphed the accident a little more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when he's looking at the thing at the X-ray. Like let's see him swerve a little bit. That right away tells you like, oh shit, something's gonna happen because. If you, even if you don't know his his origin, like you don't really think that they're going to put him in a horrific accident <laughs> in the first yeah. in the first and act. Now that you say that, when you see his hands get crumpled into the dashboard as the car crashes, that made me cringe so damn hard. Like, okay, so th- th- this is the point I was going to make is I think a lot of one of the reasons why it feels so underwhelming for me is the CGI because he's driving safely. And then the first sign of trouble is actually the accident itself. 
and the car is clearly CGI. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the logistics of doing a scene like that is, but I know you can do practical car accident effects. Um, so right away, it's like CGI. So I'm just like not engaged. My eyes know the difference. I, did you guys feel that? Not really, yes. honestly. Like, it was. It felt real enough to me that I didn't really notice it. I mean, I noticed. I noticed that it didn't look great. But the thing is, it wasn't completely focused on it because of the like enormous impact of what had just happened. You know. Right, and um, so then the car starts spinning, and I'm like CGI, CGI, <laughs> and then it does at like towards the end, they have some smashed up car. Like that, that looks real, right? When it rests in the water, finally, that's yeah. a real car. So that was kind of a nice transition, but um, and that's the only part of it that really gets me when I'm like, oh, it's real, because the rest of it is just like I'm just waiting for the motion to stop because I know nothing's really happening. But to to what you said, Everett, when his hands get crushed, it just it doesn't look real at all to me. Like I I feel like he's I, just. I, yeah. I agree because like you can very clearly tell there it's it, it's not now I want to say it's not bad CGI in the sense of like oh this is horrible it's just it, you the can contact. tell yeah. that it's computer generated. Yeah. However, it's like um it's like what we were making fun of last week with Black Widow and like the yeah. dirt covering her it's the same thing like it's just yeah. a fake dashboard over his hands. The however the reason that I think that it it's okay is because when you see that happen, you understand this is not good because there, there's enough focus that his hands are being crushed that, like, the the viewer is aware that this is going to be a serious problem. And especially because how quickly the scene goes to him waking up and seeing his hands, which is brutal. I think maybe it might have been more effective if they did a fast smash of his hands. Like he's on the steering wheel and like the front of the car just gets crunched and his hands are there. And he's like, ah, just for like one second. Because, I don't know, that the way it was in slow motion, I just, it took a lot of the emotion out of it for me. Um, now, here's a debate and I'm willing to concede that I'm wrong. But, in, you know, the Easter egg in that scene is, I assume, Rhodey. Well, we've talked about this before. We talked about this when we did the original review. We we settled on it either being Rhodey, the hammer suit soldier, yeah. or I think someone said it was like a third person. I, I think it was the hammer guy because they said experimental, and that seems more like the hammer drone stuff. They said experimental, which is a little weird because like you think they would say Tony Stark, but... They also say colonel. Right. Isn't isn't Rhodey a colonel? Yeah, Colonel he's an Air James Force Rhodes, colonel. yeah. So it's him, I'm pretty sure. But here's the reason why I prefer it to be the hammer tech guy. Because I I would like for there to be some time between Doctor Strange uh getting his you know, going to Kamartage. You know, like that when he shows up as Sorcerer Supreme in like the modern day movie, if he if that's the Hammer Tech guy, then that's like what was that two thousand ten? So that that gives you at least six years of him being uh, a sorcerer. Yeah, and especially right, how okay. OP he is in Infinity War, you'd think that there's been a lot of time for him to really master these. Abilities. Yeah, so in my head, I pretend this is kind of like how. Um, Malekith pulled the ether from Jane and killed her, like even though he didn't. But in in my mind, he did. <laughs> um, like it's one of those things where I just pretend because I think it's better that way. Heimdall had the Soul Stone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, I I'm pretty sure it's Rhodey, but I I like how he refused to work on anyone he didn't think he could cure because it would ruin his record. Do you guys remember that line? Yeah, and yeah, it comes that... back to haunt him later when another guy, he's talking to one of the other doctors, yeah. and the guy says, I have my own like image to think about. Yeah. And it's the same thing where it's like, I don't want to fail. Yeah. Um, then, there's the, then there's the whole montage of him trying to get treatment, mm-hmm. which I really enjoy as well because it's sad. The music is great. Um, 
you can see his desperation like it, it's really well written it's tight it moves smoothly from the scene to scene i uh, especially enjoy I, I believe he has an outburst and then the camera pans down and you see that he's just trying to write his name that's all he had been trying to do and it's like a struggle for him yeah so it's not just that like oh he can't be a surgeon anymore he can't it's everything essentially no one thing this movie is missing is does he ever fix his hands <laughs> no. no so his hands are the still point. they're still shaky he's, yeah, but he's got this power now, and he has a greater purpose, so he doesn't care. Okay, now in Infinity War, are his hands shaky? Yes. They are when he hands over the soul, the, the time stone, right? I think that's the only time we focus on him long enough to notice. Yeah. Yeah. Still, I think I'd like to be able to write my name. <laughs> well, I, I feel like he'd be able magic. to... I feel like he'd be able to do something with that magic. Well, Tangborn does it, so clearly he can. I don't know. Um, I liked. Uh, I I remember in the theater when when she's like, "There's more to life than just being a surgeon," and he's like, "Like you." Uh, I remember people gasped in the theater when he said that to her. They were like, oh, "It was mostly women." Uh, You're talking about the fight where he's like, um, oh, "Yeah, there's more to life." Like, like what? Like you? Thing. It's like we were barely lovers. This is the part where you leave. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, he was that's like really showing his asshole colors like he was really a dick when before he became the sorcerer. Yeah. Maybe I'm just a peasant, but uh, before the accent when he's getting dressed in his tuxedo or whatever, he opens his watch drawer. Why are they all spinning? I have no fucking idea. Is I that a rich person like, thing? I mean, it looks how, nice. Like I think the point of it is to be like, look, it's like a rich, like, th- this, he's so rich, they're spinning, they're automated, like, it's like, it's... It just, it's, it just seems like a weird thing to have, considering you mostly have the drawer closed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe it's like some rich doesn't display matter, right? or something. It's like, but the amount of engineering and, like, you know, wiring, like, just so that you could, just the one time, or I don't know, whatever. Um... Another thing about this, so in terms of casting, I forgot to mention, do you guys remember Pedro Pascal was up for this? Mm-hmm. Didn't I, you want him over I did, I did. Cumberbatch? Because this was also at a time where I still felt, felt like we didn't need another middle-aged white guy, or 30 to 35 white guy. You still feel that way. Yeah, I mean, they're still overdue. Like, they still haven't done it. Um, the, he's, the, he's the newest... Avenger to be announced, right? Is that right? Who? Like, what do you mean? Strange? Like the newest? Like since Doc, this movie, has there been any new hero announced? I mean, Captain Marvel. Which, yeah, that hasn't come out yet. I mean, there was Spider Man, right? Well, Spider Man was in Civil War. Okay. Um, which was the movie before this? Yeah, I He's, guess Ant Man was already established. Yeah. Um, so is he Black Panther? I guess Black, no. Pa- Black Panther that came was in Civil War. In- so yeah, he's the last one they did. So you know they again hit that. I don't know. I mean, here here's my stupid story. First of all, are you guys really cool with his name being Doctor Strange? Yeah, I think that's I don't fine. care. Uh, I'm not too crazy about it. But what would you replace it with? I mean, it could be anything, honestly. Sorcerer Strange. <laughs> like, I it could be a nickname. Because I think Doctor Strange, I like it. You know, well in the comics. He's a doctor. His name is strange. But in the comics, um, he, like he actually makes like house calls. He's like a doctor for the mystical threats. So like people will be possessed, like with something, and he he they call they're like you're the guy that can that can deal with like I feel like there's a ghost or some shit like that. He he like he makes he's like a doctor for that. You know what I mean? I mean maybe yeah. they can establish that in another movie. Yeah, I mean, he kind of deals with, like, really large threats in this film. So he's not your, like, friendly neighborhood doctor. Yeah. Like, ghost doctor, magic doctor. But I feel like the name works purely because he spent all that time in medical school just to earn the title. I feel like it's, like, honorary, at least, even after he loses the ability to use Well, I'm okay with the doctor part. It's the strange part that, like, his name is Stephen Strange. Okay. It's a little on the nose. Um, the problem is Sorcerer Supreme MD. But see, the, I mean, that's the thing. If you're gonna, if you ever change his ethnicity in any way, 
like that needs to go a little bit um and i was thinking like if you're going to make them hispanic you could make it like stranje and people pronounce it as strange but i feel like the the fans would not like that to me i think it would be worthwhile because we know pedro pascal pedro pascal is like a fantastic actor to me it would be worthwhile to get someone other than just like a 30 to 35 white guy um just liven it up i mean think about just think about infinity war imagine if you just had someone that would just look a little different um and spoke a little different because remember pedro pascal has an accent yeah and you know just just a little i think we need that they literally all sound the same and look the same um i mean except, except for you know you know what else would be an interesting thought um so he spends a lot of his time in camartage right mm-hmm. um like you know how sometimes when people go to foreign countries they pick up an accent like if you go to France or Australia, you kind of like pick it up. <laughs> what if what if he like attained like kind of like a foreign accent like in, in Infinity War? Yeah, I mean that would be really funny if he like started to talk like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I, I would have enjoyed Pedro Pascal in this role. I think either way. So he gets the camartage. Now this movie has actually a fantastic cast. Um, what's the ancient one's name? I forget who she is. Um, I, I mean, I know it off the top. I just can't remember. It. No, no. What's what's the actress's name? It's, oh, oh. I know it. Uh, Tilda tongue. Swinton. Yeah, yeah. So she's fantastic. And then you have the other guy, Chiwilte, Chiwilte, Effeldor. What's his name? 12 Years a Slave. Uh... I'm I'm looking at it on Wikipedia. She would tell is your four. The only, the only yeah, other can't name besides uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, and it was Mads Nicholson or Michelson. That's another one. This has actually a fantastic cast. I'm I'm actually um, I'm I'm surprised that they decided to make the ancient one a woman purely because like he's traditionally a man in the comics, but I think it works really well. Like there's like absolutely like no problems or differences. She's a fantastic actor. I think she plays it off very well. Well, there was some um, there was some controversy about that because the ancient one is an Asian character, mm-hmm. but he's also a very stereotypical Asian character. So yeah. they didn't go the stereotypical Asian way because they thought it would be disrespectful. But then they made it a white person, <laughs> which was like a slap in the face towards diversity. Apparently, um, having said that, like if you take all that out of it, I think it's a great character, and she did great with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was just gonna say like the cast in this is ridiculous. Benedict Cumberbatch, Chiwetel Ejiofor, uh, Tilda Swinton, Mads Mikkelsen, um, Michael Stolberg, uh, Rachel McAdams, and there was one more we just said, right? Who was it? Mads Mikkelsen. No, we said Mads, Mads Mikkelsen. Mikkelsen, Tilda Swinton. Is there one more big name? Wasn't there? I mean, no. Okay. Unless you count Chris Hemsworth in the final credit scene. No, no, no. Okay, so um, now he goes to Camartage and he meets Baron Mordo. Oh, I guess he's just Mordo, right? He's not a Baron. Yeah, yeah. he's not Baron Mordo yet. It's interesting. Um, on Chewbacca's IMDb, Doctor Strange isn't even like one of his like notable movies. Interesting. Um. So I believe they got this the the same guy to write the next one. Is that did you guys see that? I um, saw it somewhere. Let me look it up. Who's the guy that wrote it? Uh, like there's like three guys. Yeah, the top one I see is. But they just John announced Spathis. a new one. Is that it? Okay, Doctor Robert. Strange Two will bring back the first movie's director Scott Derrickson, uh, and writer C. Robert Cargill reportedly returning. Okay, that's good. I don't know too much about Corgill. Um, I mean, he did well here. Well, mm, the writing here wasn't anything. Once he gets into the mystic part, the writing isn't anything to call home about. Um, He doesn't really have that many... Uh, well, this movie has an interesting problem because it starts to look like a lot of other movies as soon as the first act ends. As soon as he gets the camaraderie, we got Batman Begins, right? 
with uh, twists with twists yeah like w- the twist is that it becomes the matrix <laughs> like that scene in the matrix when he, he and uh morpheus are fighting in the dojo like it looks very similar and then later you have inception well well before that is what i'm referring to so when he first gets there right the the when the ancient one throws him that's a very cool scene Mm -hmm. when he's like going through reality and like it's there's the like hymns in the background yeah he Um, gets like his uh his soul dispatched and then what i really like is when he's studying and like he's reading these books he's clearly very smart and then he starts using astral projection to read even more i think that's cool yeah because that's that's an interesting idea. doesn't seem like it would work though because you're your mind needs rest too when you sleep. Yeah, they kind of got away from it. Unless maybe astral projection, you're like removed from that need. Who knows? Yeah. Also, um, the director confirmed that he does go to the quantum realm when she takes him on that adventure. Really? Huh. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see it, right? Did it, did it look familiar to you at it any point? It looked familiar. Yeah. Yeah, but I just, I, 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 there was some level of like, okay, maybe this is just weird I mean, stuff. hey, uh, that that was something I thought of, like how Ant Man gets out of the quantum realm. I thought Wong was gonna rescue him. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, the, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it rips those movies off. I'm just saying it kind of. It, the first act is so unique and original that this one starts to get um, just f- more familiar. The rest of the film is just more familiar. Um, but I really like the ancient one. I like how she carried herself. Um, Mordo, I really like the actor, but doesn't he always look like he's about to cry every time he's talking? Yeah, he seemed kind of like a like childish. He does have movie. a bit of like the we need to do this for the good of everyone. <laughs> yeah, like, there's you know what I'm talking about, like the like the, yeah. yeah about to be martyred guy. Now if he's gonna be the villain of the next one, well, you know they can they 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 could adapt that nicely. If he's because I don't I don't think he should become like ah I've got you in my clutches like he should believe what he's doing is correct um and you know maybe it is because his whole thing is that he thinks that the sorcerers there's too many of them drawing power from unclean places this movie sets that up so um the villain it's going to be Mordo. I mean, that's the assumption. But the director also mentioned um, the villain Nightmare and the concept of the Nightmare Realm, which I'm not familiar with. Are, do you know what that is, Everett? Um, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, he's more of a minor villain. It doesn't really. He's not really that relevant. But that pisses me off because, so especially with this movie, you have Dormammu and everything. That opens up. Dormammu? So many different. My Gengar levels. in Pokemon Go is named Dormammu. Yeah, but no, like I was saying, it opens up so many doors to the cosmic side of Marvel. Like you could have so many different levels of evil in a movie like this, and to he, go that low is just kind of. He is the evil ruler of a dream dimension where tormented humans are brought during their sleep. He roams this realm on his demonic black horned horse named Dreamstalker. He appears as a chalk white man with wild green hair, a green bodysuit, and a ragged cape. He was the first foe met by Doctor Strange when a man who was having troubled dreams went to Strange for help, though it is revealed this is due to him committing a murder. Later, Nightmare imprisoned several humans in his dimension, but Strange frees them. When Doctor Strange forgot to recite a spell before he slept, Nightmare started tormenting him. Before Strange was freed, after tricking Nightmare by casting an illusion of one of Nightmare's enemies. Does Nightmare appear in the Justice League animated series? The what? <clears throat> the Justice League like animated series doesn't That's DC. No, wait. Yeah, I know. Wait. Sorry. I... It's just that like that sounds extremely familiar. He's also a, a common enemy for Ghost Rider. Which makes Yeah, sense. that's what I was going to say cuz I-, I want Mephisto to show up in the MCU so damn bad. Did, they didn't do Mephisto on, on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? No, they didn't. Okay. They just did Ghost Rider. And it wasn't even the real Ghost Rider. It was like the ultimate Well, it was Ghost Robbie Rider. Reyes, yeah. But they did they did do Johnny Blaze. He was they in showed it. him for half a second. Yeah, he was in it. Um, 
yeah so anyway this is like this sounds like some dark magic that mordo because at the end mordo kind of says he kind of just goes like what what is his deal because so okay okay so ancient one says you can't use this type of magic then Cassilius yeah. finds out that she did use this type of magic and then he wants to use it more so he kind of takes off with some people to try and bring Dormammu and the whole dark magic blah 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 then it turns out ancient one is using this kind of magic to keep herself alive to keep up the fight is that what basically yeah and then so Mordo discovers this towards the end of the movie and goes this is bullshit <laughs> then um, and then, like Strange, he he feels like Strange did the same thing using the magic, right? And so he leaves, and then he decides that there's too many sorcerers using these like mad this magic, and they're not using it the right way. So he k- starts going around killing them. The first of which we see is Pangborn. I don't think he killed him. I think he just stole his power. Yeah, he took it back. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's stealing people's power. That that's interesting. Um. Another thing about the whole training montage stuff, it seemed like they had a lot of disciples. Oh, yeah. But, of course, none of them were warriors, I guess. Or useful. <laughs> yeah. In any way. I, I mean, would it, would you guys be okay with him, with Strange being the only student there at that time? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I feel like it's supposed to be, like, exclu- well, not exclusive, but yeah, no, limited, I right? Yeah. I wouldn't care, but... I, I, I think there should have been like different sects to the, to the academy to the to Kamertage. Strange should have been training in a very specific like. Let's say that she's training Strange because she recognizes that he could be a warrior. He could be someone who could fight back against Kaiselos, be a guard. But there should be other types of people there like Pangborn who aren't there to train to be warriors. They just want to heal. Yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah, I like that idea. Um, all right, so he goes through the training. Um, I, I did like some of the action sequences, like when they get attacked. Um, the whole, like, three doors to different climates. Cities of powers. No, no, no. Uh, like, remember he was throwing the enemies into, like, the snow. Oh, in New York, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, so I like seeing, like, that weird stuff. That that brace he throws on Caselius is pretty cool. Um, it was also interesting, like you said, the three doors to, the, to London, Hong Kong, New York. Um, and so all, all that was cool. I, I enjoyed watching him use the time stone. But remember what I said last week about how Thanos maybe could have just reversed time altogether? Yeah, mm-hmm. like he meant he he didn't know what he was doing. It's like that that's laid into this because Doctor Strange r- reads and learns how to use it, whereas like other people don't understand how it works. Right. And th- like even because Kaecilius doesn't like remember they say right at the end like you should have read the warnings after like like they're uneducated they're naive. Um, yeah. Uh, so, that, I mean, the groundwork was set for, like, that's another thing, I think, in my uh, head canon. <laughs> um, but, yeah, watching the apple come up, come and go was cool. Um, now, when they, when he brings the pages of the book back, and then, like, they do a mirror thing and take it away. I thought, now, I don't have any evidence here. I thought that was the beginning of like causality or something. Something was breaking because it was like, it was expanding out. It wasn't like the mirror dimension where it was everywhere. It was like in one spot and expanding out. And then he stopped. And as he closes the eye of Agamotto or whatever, the weird crystals disappear. Hmm. So I took that as the beginning of like a temporal something. Mm Because, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, interesting to think about. Yeah, well, I, I, so is are we meant to think that 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 was like Mordo doing that? Because they all yelled at him. As I said, I thought that it was him causing it himself. He was creating a temporal anomaly, and then he they come in and stop him, and it goes away. It wasn't Cassilius stealing it, was it? I don't think so. 
Where did the book go after that? I think what it just stayed mean? there, didn't it? Yeah, he didn't take it. No, no, no. But he had read the page. It disappeared. Like, the mirror stuff comes down, and then it, it's it gone once the mirror stuff goes away. They, that's never explained. I feel like Wong just put it back in the library. Like That's what I was assuming, but I wasn't sure. Um, so, yeah, then you have that big battle. Then um, he gets the Cloak of Levitation, which I thought was cool. Uh what about the, the astral mis- battle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about <laughs> the, the cape like beats the shit out of the dude the fighting him? Yeah. What about the Mr. Doctor joke? I, I liked thought that it. was fun. I liked it. I, I guess you have to make a joke like that. Um But it just like the, the the writing doesn't really make sense. He goes, um Mr. and he goes, Doctor. And he goes, Mr. Doctor? And he goes, it's strange. And he goes, uh, maybe. maybe. Who am, who I, am to I to judge? Like, yeah, in reality, eh. he would have been like, no, it's strange. Like, and he'd be like, he what's just... strange? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's like, I'm strange. And then he could have been like, yeah, you are. Like That, I think, might have been a little funny, but whatever. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah. I was just curious if that bothered you guys. It didn't bother me, but I just thought, no, it didn't. it's a little... Then, you know, a little much. They yeah, jump into the Matrix bit. warfare. Yeah. No, or Inception th- warfare. Now, Doctor Strange, he was strangely uh, uh, competent at hand-to-hand combat. Um, but, okay, I guess we'll pretend he trained. He training. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I guess we do see him, Mordo, trains him by like beating the shit out of him. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. so then he... What does Caecilius do to drag them out? Oh, yeah. So Caecilius flees, right? Yeah, and they chase him down. Okay, but then he comes back. Because he wants to destroy the sanctums. Yeah. So he comes back, and then he... uh, Strange puts him in the mirror dimension. Mm -hmm. And then does Strange expand it? No, when you're in the mirror dimension, you're in it. And so he has their sling ring, so they can't get out. And then they're going to run and try to get out, but they can't because they're being chased. And Caecilius is stronger in the mirror dimension. Wait, Caecilius had Strange's sling ring? No, String had... Yeah. I think it was... Caecilius weren't they trying to escape string, and to stop them from trying to escape, like to go through the portals? They put him in the mirror dimension, but because that they're fueling their power from the dark dimension, they become more powerful in the mirror dimension. Yeah, and right. And in the mirror dimension, Strange is trying to open a portal so they can get out and strand them in the mirror dimension. But then every time he tries to do that, Caecilius, using that power, like destroys everything and messes him up until the yeah. Ancient One comes. Okay. Now, when he first puts the mirror dimension up, isn't it just a small bubble inside the Sanctum? Well, I, I think that was I just to showcase it, right? Yeah, you're in the dimension. When you're in the dimension, wherever you go is part of the mirror dimension. I thought it was a firm boundary. They, I think they explained it. They said it's the mirror dimension is literally like a mirror of our own of our own dimension, where people can practice spells safely and stuff. But I, yeah, I think Emerson's right. Where it's literally like our dimension, ha- just you know, mirrored, kind of yeah. like backwards almost. So how do you get out of it? You're Same. trapped unless you can make a portal out. So a portal back to the real world? Mm-hmm. Yeah, back to the normal dimension. But if you just... if you, How does how does your sling ring know the difference? Because you know the difference. Well, I, so like, is it a uh, physical boundary? It's No, I don't think it's a physical boundary. I think it's a literal other dimension. Because do we ever see anyone smash into like a mirror wall? No. Well, Thanos punches one. Yeah, that is true. Uh, hmm. He does try to trap him in the mirror dimension and he smashes it. In this it. movie, at least, that's not shown. Yeah, Thanos had the Infinity Gauntlet. I mean, so. my question is because it seems like they're in a little bubble inside the Sanctum. And then I forget why, but for some reason they run out and then it's like bigger. Well, but you can still see the boundary. He trapped them in there to stop them. So they were about to do the ritual that would have blown the Sanctum up. So Strange goes, mirror dimension, Sanctum, safe. Then 
Mordo's like, you're an idiot because they're way stronger here. So then they start chasing them to kill them. So Mordo and Strange run. Now you're right about the sling ring because isn't that how uh, Ancient One dies? Is she goes through the sling ring and falls into the real world? Well, she gets stabbed first, but then yes. Yeah, but that like she gets out of this the the mirror dimension because of yes. the sling ring, right? Okay. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. all right, anyway. Um so yeah, that whole third act was pretty badass, especially when the ancient one shows up. Um jumping through all the like debris and like having it transform around them. All that was really cool, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what that's what makes this movie like so artful and artistic. Like Yeah, th- like, like you said never... the, you said earlier the art direction, you were like that was spot on. That's it yeah. has fantastic art direction. I, I was also going to say that there's not, never really been anything done like this before, so it's fairly unique in the way they do everything in this movie. I think the only thing that I've seen similar to this would be that one scene from Rick and Morty. That And they even mentioned that that was like inspiration almost. Like that had a similarity. Do you remember that episode of Rick and Morty where the cloud like takes you on that magical mystery tour? No, I know, but you don't think Inception has some similarities? Not vaguely. I mean, like, more along the lines of, like, the mysticism, like, and the magic. Inception's felt a little more, like, analytical and, like, more having to do with, like, the shapes and shifting, more, like, less than magic and stuff. Fair enough. Now, um, I forgot, and I I forgot about this one as I watched it, too. There's a third act that's, like, the Inception third act. But then you lead to the ancient one, and the scene where the ancient one dies is like a beautiful scene, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then there's the other third act, which is in Hong Kong with yep. the backwards time. I completely forgot Fourth about that. Act. Yeah. And that scene is also like pretty incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wong straight up dies. He dies, yeah. I mean, it's really incredible. And um, I, I noticed I don't know how something they filmed I didn't know. Uh, how the fuck I, did they film that? How did they storyboard this shit? Like, someone, like, plans this out and is like, here's what we're going to do, and then they actually do it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that is pretty phenomenal how they managed to pull that off. When you think about all the stuff that was in that street, just think about all the stuff. The guy, the food vendor, the aquarium, the the guys, like, building the build, the scaffolding, um, just all the people, the various cars, uh, and just more, there's way more. That's just all I can remember off the top of my head. There's just like way more. And you think about all that in one scene. And then they do this weird ass fucking thing where they're filming it backwards and then forwards again. It's insane. But you know what I noticed this time around? Um, So there there are a couple like little Easter eggs in this game if you can catch them that are like in the forms of those weapons that they use. That staff that that Wong uses at the end. Uh Uh-huh is um I think it's called the Wand of Watum and that's like something from the comics and there's Doesn't other Mordo ones like, call it something earlier? No, M- Mordo talks about the staff of the Living Tribunal which is like oh, right, a whole right, other yeah. massive cosmic entity. He has like those boots of um vaulting something that that has to do with yeah. something else like stuff like that. Like I thought that was pretty mm-hmm. cool that they put that stuff in. Yeah. No, that was cool. Um so then we have the fifth act which is Strange goes to the dark dimension and confronts uh, Dormammu, which is another brilliant scene. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't really understand the time loop here. The, okay. All the other times I've seen this, it didn't bother me. But he he puts on some sort of weird like symbol on his time stone bracelet. I'm assuming it's like essentially doing a quick save in a video game. Yeah, like a checkpoint almost. So it's not a real loop. It's just... But reverting everyone it. remembers. Everyone remembers what happened. Well, including... Isn't that weird, though, that they remember? No, it has to be like that, because otherwise his plan wouldn't work. Well, yeah, but it doesn't make sense that it would be like that. It's essentially like restart. As I said, that's why I'm thinking of it as a quick save point. If you're playing a video game, you die, and you go back to your quick save, you remember what just happened. Yeah. Um, okay, okay, so if it's a true time loop, then there would need to be a time limit on it. So let's say every two minutes, Strange comes over again. Dormammu, I've come like there needs to be like it's like it's like a GIF loop, right? Like, which is why I'm saying I feel like it's a quick save because it's when he dies, it's right? But if it's a quick save, then it's not the same Doctor Strange. Well, you know how I like to think of it. Um, 
think of it kind of like Happy Death Day or Groundhog Day, where it's like the same time period over and over and over again. The same thing happens over and over again, but there are subtle differences based on what the person who's being affected does in that time period. So Doctor Strange sets that one period of time, like he puts the bracelet on and that sets that like sort of checkpoint almost. And then he goes and he does all the stuff with Dormammu and then he dies. And then it reverts back kind of like waking up, but you still remember everything. So, and then he goes back again and again and again. He could change things any way that he wants, but it will always revert back to that one moment where he set that. That's kind of how I like to think of it, at least. Okay, I'm just I'm just putting it out there that I don't think that it makes sense that he would remember or that Dormammu would remember if it's just a quick save. I mean, I don't disagree with and you. And is it triggered by his death? I think it is. That doesn't I really make sense either. Is. Because, well... Like, if the First movie all, says it does, then whatever, but... We're dealing with magic. We're not told a ton. Yeah. And, uh... And we have to assume what we can. There is also another sort of, uh... Like, a plot hole. Is that, um... The Infinity Stones only work in the universe or dimension they were created in. So, technically, if he takes that, that stone into another dimension... Is that set by the dimension, movies, though, or the comics? That's comics. I don't know how they do it in the movies. They haven't said it in the movies yet. Yeah, so. traditionally, it's in the, only in the universe they're created in. So, technically, if he takes it out and goes to that dimension, the stone shouldn't really work, should it? Well, that's only if they do it like that Yeah. in the movies. Um, one, one last thing about this film... Um, were you guys at all surprised that Rachel McAdams' character does not appear in the third act? Yeah, I thought it was kind of weird that she um, just kind of drops no, off the face of the earth. Because I can't imagine how she would appear in a way that didn't feel strange and forced considering the insanity. That You're totally in right. But in, in terms of these Marvel movies and the way that they're typically written and forced upon us, it does seem like you need the love interest in the third act. But and then again, I'm this happy isn't... she doesn't show up. Yeah. No, well, this isn't good. technically like a traditional Marvel movie in a lot of ways. They do a lot of things differently. Right. I'm just saying, isn't that interesting that that they didn't do that? That is interesting, yeah. Because when you really, really think about it, it's kind of astounding that they didn't do that. Or they didn't force Scott Derrickson to do it. it I mean, it's Rachel McAdams. That's a famous person. She has a lot of uh, like pull with audiences, the notebook mm-hmm. and shit like that. Um, and she, they're not shoving her down our throats. Meanwhile, Gwyneth Paltrow, like, constantly, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, like, who's another one? Um, you get a lot of the Captain America love interests. Also in Thor before uh, yeah. she... Thor was a out. terrible she offender of that. all the time. Um, yeah. Like, Black Panther had, what's her name? Ant-Man has the Wasp. I mean, the Wasp is supposed to be an equal member, but obviously she's not. Not yet. Not anyway. the second one she wasn't. Yeah. Um, okay, so are we ready for the fight of the week? Well, yeah, I had one more are. thought. Oh. The, I just wanted to bring it up, the fact that, first, I, I think it's really cool how Benedict Cumberpatch also plays Dormammu in this movie. Yeah. Something I, like, yeah. didn't necessarily well, catch didn't on to until I, I left the theater the first time. You know the very, very first time I saw this, and they they made the first reference to Dormammu with, the, with like, the eyes? We didn't really see him see him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you see, like, the wrinkles on his face? I'm like, is that Thanos? Because <laughs> they had the lines. Yeah. And he's big and purple. I'm like, is this like a vision, like a mystical vision of Thanos? I didn't, because Dormammu in the comics is like a guy with a fire on yeah, his head. Yeah, he looks more <laughs> like Ghost Rider almost. Yeah, yeah, he does. So, anyway. Um, all right, fight of the week. All right, yeah. so the fight of the week. So, Kia, you are inside the New York Sanctum. Uh, confronting Kaecilius and his zealots. You have Doctor Strange's abilities, you have the cape, and you also have your own fighting skills. Your objective is to murder Kaecilius and the zealots so that the third and fourth acts don't have to happen. Dude, I don't know if I can do that. Because Kaecilius was better than Doctor Strange, wasn't he? Yes, he was. That's why this is the fight of the week. The Zealots were not were not they weren't great. much. Am I by myself? Yes. How many Zealots do we have? Two. Plus Caecilius? Yes. 
Huh. Yeah, I would immediately put him in the they mirror They don't know dimension. you're a threat, though. They don't know you're a threat. Oh, That's they, the they, they don't know who I am at all? They know that you're someone from Comertage, okay? But they don't recognize that you have some level of control over the Mystic Arts. They don't know that you're a fighter. They will kill you because, but like, they, they'll be overconfident at first, let's say. Okay, so first thing is whichever one of the zealots come at me first would probably underestimate me. So in this scenario, I could probably get the upper hand, but ultimately I'm going to let the cloak get in the driving seat and I'm going to like supplement his efforts with my, uh, with my magic. Like I'm going to let the cloak do the fighting or most of the fighting and the directing and the guiding because okay. I can't take Casilius on my own based on like, just what Doctor Strange did in the movies. I mean, if I do that 100,000 man thing that he does in Infinity War, I guess. But I, I mean, I don't think I'd be capable of that in this film. So, like, and then he's got like those, the glowing strands that tie people up. But Casillas can probably deal with that. I, I mean, he, yeah, I think I lose this one. I don't think I can do this one. Huh. Okay. Did you Did you think I could? Well, see, what I would think you would do is fall back deeper into the Sanctum, like Strange did. Yeah. All right? The Zealots pursue you. You, I, I assume you'd be able to kill the first one fairly easily, considering he'd underestimate you. Yeah. Okay. Then, with the second one, yeah, he'd probably be fighting harder, but Strange was able to deal with them. He threw them out, like, into that other dimension. And once you have the third one gone, I could say you could just beeline it to the suit of armor, which the, the, the cape would definitely take you. You throw it on Kaecilius. Now he's uh, immobile, and you can just kill him. <laughs> well, see, I see it as I take out the first guy, and then the other two double-team me. But, see, in the movie, they don't do that. That's why I think you might have a chance. Because Where does Casilius go when the he's zealots... like walking slowly, letting the zealots charge? I thought they he's were like... more focused on trying to destroy the sanctum. They were, but remember that scene where they're walking down the hallway and Caecilius is spending his time messing with physics as the zealots charge? Strange. Mm-hmm. Um, why was he doing that? Uh, okay, the real answer because they knew that if two of them attacked Strange at once, he'd be dead. So they needed him to be doing something else. Yeah. The in-movie answer is he's messing with his stuff. It's beneath him. He's showing off his power. Um, yeah, see, the thing about Cassilius is that he uses those, like, ice, icicle spears. Or... Well, they're, they're mirror shards. Yeah, mirror shards. He uses those a lot. So if I if I get double teamed at all that like that's what's gonna get me. So that's why I feel like I would probably lose. Even like even in a one on one against me versus Kaecilius. but if it's me versus Kaecilius plus another zealot, I don't see it happening. Huh. All right. But anyway, all right. Um, let's go to our roundup section. So, I, Everett, based on your recommendation, I watched Sex Education on Netflix. Yeah. Um, the first episode has a lot of sex in it. And I was, uh, I'm not a huge fan of that, like as I may have mentioned already. I know you guys know that. Uh, so, I was sort of like, this is kind of gimmicky. Um, and this is kind of like, I, I'm not the intended audience. So, basically, what the show's about is it's Asa Butterfield. Who I think was in the running to be Spider Man, wasn't he? Was he? I don't know. I just Maybe. know him from Ender's Game. For, and from Hugo. For Civil War. I saw Butterfield Spider Man. I think he was one of the like top three names. Um yeah, he was. He was one I mean he was a little bit younger. He's older now. He's almost like he's almost appropriate for it now. Um but he's a little bit too a little like maybe like too formal maybe a little scrawny it's not the scrawniness it is like the formal formality i think like his he's a little proper yeah and maybe he could have like blended into the role but so the the fine like the the three actors still in the running at the time when asa was cut out was tom holland charlie Plummer, who i actually think would have been a little bit better matthew lintz 
who I don't know. Um, he was in Pixels. And, and then and then Butterfield was the other one. So anyway, it's also Butterfield. Yeah, he's also from, uh, what was that movie? The big one? Hugo and Maze Ender's Runner. Game. Ender's Game, sorry. Yeah, Ender's Game. Um, so he's like a um, sexually frustrated teenager in high school. In is it like London or some part of? I don't England? think it was London. I think it was like a part of like Great Britain. Somewhere, yeah, somewhere over there. And uh, he goes to like a nice school, but it's not like it's more like it seems more like a regular high school and not like a private school, like British school. It's like, not like a prep school. I think yeah. it's kind of like a selective high school. Almost. Yeah, they don't wear uniforms. Um, so his mother is a sex therapist. And she's like way too into his life, and she's played by Jillian Anderson, I think is her name. Um, and so he goes. He ends up meeting this kind of like, let's say, sketchy girl, and she needs money. So she says, "Hey, let's start a sex clinic because you're not too like." She sees that he's not too bad with the advice because. Um, because he kind of knows like some of the things that his mom has like taught him for like therapy. Emerson, do you you get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. So, so they they kind of counsel like this one person, and then it works, and they get paid. Like the person pays them for his advice. So wow. they're splitting the money, um, and then it just becomes sort of about that. Like we're gonna run this sex clinic at school, but he doesn't know the first thing about sex. He knows therapy pretty well, but he doesn't know sex. And um, so the girl is like the one they're comfortable with coming to the clients. So she's like the middleman and she's connecting the clients with him. And uh, he's giving advice and it's a big mess. And um, he, you know, so again, the, the first episode has a lot of sex in it, which I was just like, I'm like, I don't know if this show's for me. Like, it's not a bad show, but I don't need yeah. to watch eight episodes. We've talked of, about that before where it's like, even when it's a good show, when there's too much sex, it just becomes like, can we move to something like, yeah, like, I'm, like the characters are nice, but if, if it's just like, if I'm just here just to see, like, it's like a high school girl, even though I, I know she's obviously older than high school and they're like showing me her boobs and shit. And I'm like, if this is all I'm waiting for, then I, I could be watching something else, honestly. <laughs> Um, cause it's, it's 2019. If I want to see a pair of boobs, like I can see it whenever I want. I don't need to like, I don't need to watch this show for this. Um, so anyway, surprisingly, I just watched the second episode. Like when we, we've been playing ghost recon every night. And then when I go to bed, I usually watch one, one episode. Um, and surprisingly the characters really grew on me really well. Um, the very last episode falls into some predictable tropes that that these kind of teenager shows have, unfortunately. But prior to that, I'm not going to say it was just like unbelievable and um, unpredictable and all that. I'm just going to say that I really, really enjoyed it. Um, hmm. I thought it was really fun. It's only eight episodes, so... They got renewed the, for season two, though, so it that's did, yeah. what I'm excited for. Unfortunately, it just came out, so like season two is going to be a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I really did enjoy it. Um, like my favorite part of it, I think, is there's like there's like a, a an impromptu performance in the cafeteria. Yeah. And then Otis's friend Eric, like the band starts playing, and Otis's friend is like, "Wait, I'm in the band. Why didn't they ask me to play?" <laughs> and it's because he sucks. Like, yeah, I <laughs> like the that. show tells like shows you that he sucks. He's terrible. And mm. like I just thought that was like really funny. Um, the show is funny too. I, I, I enjoyed it. I think I binged like the last four episodes and I was really looking forward to watching them too. Um, hmm. Awesome. That's about all I had time for. Emerson, you saw The Green Book? Yes, I did. Uh, highly recommend. Fantastic movie. Viggo Mortensen and uh, Marshala Ali. Marshala. I don't, I don't Marshala know. Marshala Ali. Both fantastic actors. They have amazing screen chemistry. Um, it deals with a lot of tropes of like, you know how African Americans were treated, some class issues, but really what I was most amazed about is it was really funny. It was really, really funny. Um had Yeah, some I'm gonna check it out. Phenomenal joke, so I don't want to spoil anything, but it was definitely a win and I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that movie out for sure. I don't think is it still playing? I think it might 
be. I don't I'm know. so busy with wrestling season. Otherwise, I would have seen it already. But I might have to wait for it now. Um, okay, Ever, did you see anything this week? Um, nothing particularly new. Um, yeah, no, nothing really new this week. I didn't really have a lot of time. All right. Um, so trailers. We got the Birds of Prey teaser. Did you guys see that? Yeah, I saw that. Yes. It looks it looks terrible. Yeah. Um, but we expected that, right? Like it it, it it's a really like short. Um, it, I don't know. They they show a bunch of characters which I'm not familiar with. Um, I just because you barely see them, and then it shows Harley Quinn just like walking around, being stupid. I, I get the feeling from it that it was just like almost testing the waters. So yeah. Like, hey, we're doing this. The, sort of. The teaser it. does not present any viable story concepts or ideas or really anything to other than, hey, it's Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn and she's laughing or something. Like more wildness is coming. And yep. like, okay, and then like you said, we're so, they want to know if we go, oh yeah, it's time. Like we're so excited, or or if people are like, well, what was, what is this? Why do we care? So, um, that was that. Uh, there was a Toy Story teaser at the Super Bowl. I saw it. Yeah. Okay, what was it? Because I didn't, I didn't. Didn't watch look the whole good. Thing. Uh, it, it's Woody and Bo Peep on top of like a building at the carnival. And then it shows Buzz Lightyear has been zip tied to like a back of a like a prize wall for like, like a if you win. And then there's two like fuzzy things that start screaming at him, and he's like, "I just want to get out of here." And, then they and those are that's him. Key and Peel, I think. Oh yeah, I think well, I heard. The... It wasn't funny. And then they start kicking him. And Actually, like, Drew said uh-huh. that, so maybe I don't know. I wouldn't. Maybe it's not accurate. He like puts he puts like his helmet on and traps one of the thing's legs. It was absolutely garbage. It did not look interesting to me at all. I was so annoyed in Toy Story three. First of all, I went on. This is kind of funny. I went on a date to see Toy Story three, and the okay. girl kind of looked like, uh, who's the girl cowboy? Jesse. <laughs> like not in a bad way but she looked exactly like her like so much so that i i had to tell her like i was like are you like do you do you know that you look just like <laughs> jesse like do Did you that end up well i mean she was like smiling like, she didn't get offended but i think she was like she was just kind of like what do you say but she literally looked just like her so and then I had not seen Toy Story 2 in a long time, obviously. I think I was like 21 or 22 when 3 came out. And um, like the whole time, I thought that Jesse was Woody's girlfriend. At least I thought that's where we left off. And then like she's like... She, she's like flirting with Buzz the whole movie. So I was getting more and more annoyed. And then towards the end when they're like headed towards the fire pit or whatever... And they're all about to, like, die. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> yeah. I never saw Toy Story 3, actually. Well, well, she reaches over and holds hands with Buzz. And I was literally like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, and, and the girl was like, what? I'm like, she's really going to just hold his fucking hand when Woody's right there, like, right before they die? And and she's like, I don't think they're together. I, I thought they were, like, brother and sister. I'm like, are they? I had no clue. I, I didn't know. That would have been a funny <laughs> twist at the end. Woody's like, "What the hell?" Like, I thought that I thought that's what they were going for. Like they're trying to break Woody's heart right before he dies. I mean, <laughs> I never thought that he was gonna die. That's why I kind of thought that they that she might like this might be the moment where he's like, "Oh, he loves her. she loves him instead." And like I was like, "What a fucking bitch move! Why don't you die alone instead of doing that you piece of shit? Like you can't just go down with the rest of them. You gotta." Hold hands with fucking Buzz Lightyear, but yeah. So apparently it's Bo Peep that he, he he's got a thing with. So yeah. Um, Put the pitchforks away. Yeah. Okay. So we got we got an End Game teaser. Yeah. Which I have not it, watched with sound on. It wasn't horrible. It's got a lot of sports stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a Super Bowl, but it was okay. I mean, I like the. 
the direction it was going. I mean, Cap's in that like self help area, kind of like how uh, where Falcon was when he found him in Captain America Two. Um, there's a lot of cool shots here. So, uh, so do you think that this this shot of a stadium is in the movie? I hope so. I'm really hoping that that opening what's, montage. What's going on is in like, the stadium? Yeah, no, why did it I'm look hoping... like Ellis Island was like a port now? Yeah, and so he's obviously well, in some PTSD group. I'm hoping that we see that some of these shots are reflective of, at the beginning of Endgame, we see some immediate aftermath of the snap. Yeah, like I some do. I do want to see that chaos. Um, Nebula and Tony working on something. That's a cool shot. Um, so it seems outside of a, the Avengers facility, I see Rhodey, I see Bruce Banner, I see Captain America and Natasha. Um, Ant Man. Ant Man wasn't walking with them. Um, okay, Rocket. He's wearing like a comic accurate outfit. It looks like he's catching fish. Maybe. Black Widow's got her blonde ponytail. We've got uh, Ant Man and War Machine in a new armor. This is not the Mark IV. This is the Mark V. It looks like. Um, the rumor is that he has another accessory pack that will add to his current suit, the Mark V, uh-huh. to make it like a big armor. Interesting. Isn't that what you've been asking for? Mm, I mean, I think it's going to be too big. Uh, I like I liked what he had in Infinity War with the digital camo. I like that. I sold my War Machine. Did I tell you guys that? Yeah. No. Yeah, I sold it. I'm, I think I'm going to buy the digital one, but I'll wait and see what this one looks like before I buy it. Um, we see Thor. He's wearing his red cape. He's got Stormbreaker. I, I can't tell what he's in. If if he's on another planet or not, I can't tell. It kind of looks like um, Mbaku's place, doesn't it? You think? Because it, remember when Mbaku had all those like st- long rectangular objects like floating around? Yeah, he had like that weird art up um near his throne. Yeah. Um. Um, Hawkeye looks stupid as fuck. <laughs> like maybe the we haven't seen the context, maybe the execution, but just the haircut alone, it's like my family's dead. Old. But he's just like, imagine your family's dead. You become this dark, dark person, and so you're like, well, I gotta let people know with my new trendy haircut. Let me just style it just right so people can see how hurt I am. Really, like, it should be the other way. He should have really long, unkempt hair. He shouldn't give a fuck anymore. Or just like shave it, like go straight buzz. Like I don't care about anything. I I didn't really understand the ending of the teaser where Cap unhinges his shield. Like, um, okay. Well, I'm looking at it like frame by frame right now, and it looks like his hands are kind of dirty, maybe bloody. Oh no. So they, I mean, they look dirty for sure. So yeah, he just unstraps it. This is this. If I had to guess, that's the scene. Although Kevin Feige said that they're not going to show any more than like the first thirty minutes of the film, which I believe. Yeah, there could be some of that thing I was talking about where maybe there's like chaos in the streets, and the Avengers are like trying to rein it in a bit. Yeah, uh, I'm also looking at. Well, like dirty, not like maybe dusty. Like maybe he like. I can't tell what costume he's wearing. Like ash, maybe. Um, and so then we have another shot of them walking in like the hangar. It looks like Chris Evans, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Rocket Raccoon, and I'm guessing Ant Man. I don't he- think Hulk is there. You know what that kind of looked like? You remember from the first and then like, War official Machine. trailer, they had that um, that like that scene where you were looking at that hangar, but it's empty. Did they just remove everyone from that? Because it looks like the exact same shot, just with people in it. Which one? What are you talking about? Do you remember? Okay, you remember from the original Endgame trailer where they're showing off like like various scenes. Like you see Bruce Banner in front of all the like the screens with people who are missing, and then they show you like a tracking wide shot of that hangar, like the Avengers hangar, but it's empty to show you that everyone's gone. And then in this spot from the Super Bowl, it's that same shot of that hangar, but there's people like everyone's walking through it now. Did did it look similar? 
Almost. I don't know, but I think that, that that shot of them walking through, I think the Hulk is there too, but they just haven't put him in. Right. Because then that would reveal like what's going on. Because it, it seems like... Because uh, War Machine is wearing his armor. So... Um, okay, moving on to news. There's not a whole lot of news. Um, Chris Evans may have a future in the MCU outside of Captain America as a director of some of the Disney Plus things. <laughs> that could be interesting. Yeah, directed by Captain America. Yeah, because um, you know they're doing that Falcon Winter Soldier one, so that could be him. Interesting. Yeah, um, I'm looking, uh, just because comicbook.com has an article on it about, like, what, whatever, what it could possibly be. Um, Kevin Feige has supposedly offered him the opportunity to direct a few episodes of those limited series that Marvel Studios is prepping for Disney+. Plus. Um, so, that's just whatever. Uh, Chris Pratt says that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is definitely happening. And that's literally all the news. Um, and then Ben Affleck. So Matt Reeves said that they're like taking. I guess I should find the damn thing. Basically, it's basically confirmed that Ben Affleck is out. Although we already knew that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I thought he made, like, an official statement. He didn't make an official statement. I'm trying to find exactly what the statement was. Um, it's just... Uh, it's a Twitter thing. Sorry, I'm trying to find it. Um, ben Affleck passes the torch. Okay, let's... Let's see what we got here. I'm just going to read specifically what it says. Okay. The Batman to fly in summer 2021. Ben Affleck passes the torch to to next generation of Bruce Wayne. It's a terrible headline, but it's from Deadline Hollywood. Then Ben Affleck retweeted that. And it's, uh, it said, excited for the Batman in summer 21, 2021 and to see Matt Reeves' vision come to life. So he didn't say, I'm out. All he said is, I'm excited to see the movie come to life. Um, but just, he, just let it die. He didn't say he's in. And we, so basically, nothing that, like, we already think that he's out. So this doesn't really say officially that he's out, but it basically means that he's out. So kind of no new information, but whatever. Damn. Moving on to gaming. Um,. So, Everett, last week you asked about the Spider-Man Fantastic Four suits. They came out. Yep. And there was no story DLC at all, unfortunately. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. But they added the Bagman suit, which is good enough for me, I guess. Yeah, there's the Bagman suit. There is um, that white suit, the white and black Spider-Man suit that the Fantastic Four... Yeah, that's from like an organization. I forget the name of it, though. First Foundation, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So, anyway, that's kind of a letdown. I mean, the, 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 I like the white suit, whatever. Um, so, that's so they're that. not working on any other DLC? It doesn't seem like it at this time, no. Damn. Um, all right, Emerson, last thing, Ace Combat 7. Yes, Ace Combat 7, the sky's unknown. I have never played one of these games ever before. I remember seeing the trailer uh, about a year and a half ago and saying, you know, that looks kind of sick. And I saw it on Steam uh, the other day. It was just released February 1st. And so I, I picked it up, and I've been playing it, and I absolutely love it. So to give you guys So some, it's on computer? Yeah, it's on computer. So just, uh, and PS4. It's not on Xbox. It's, it's on PS4? Mm. Um, yeah. And so to give you guys some knowledge of what it is, it's set in a fictional universe that's analogous to our real world. It's like a modern day, but it's different countries and different backstories. But basically... They have almost every single fighter jet ever created uh, in the game from the 1960s to the modern day to even like some uh, experimental aircraft. And basically the game's campaign is you are playing as these fighter pilots working for some of the main nations and you're going on these sorties and it is absolutely amazing. I just love it. 
Uh, I was playing a mission the other day where I was in an, an F-16 fighting Falcon, and we were dispatched to just escort this um, dignitary's plane, and we're flying through, and all of a sudden, there's MIGs everywhere, and it was just, like, the controls, even on computer, using, like, the... Uh, just the keypad and the mouse it feels so real like you're playing your screen is shaking a little bit as you're like pulling these insanely tight turns you're trying to get locks on enemy aircraft as they're locking on you your teammates are getting blown out of the sky like it's really fantastic game i've really enjoyed it so far and hopefully i'll beat it and i'll be able to update you guys on it uh next next episode what what kind of specs like for a computer do you think would be best to run this game? i think your computer could play it um yeah. Because, yeah, because you have a newer Alienware, and my computer runs it really well. Um, All right. I mean, you can always go to canyourunit.com and, like, put that, the game yeah, in. Yeah, that's a good point. But I really enjoy it. Like, it's just fantastic. Um, and as I said, they so have is it every co-op? line. It is multiplayer. Does that mean we go against each other? I don't know. I'll have to look into that further. I've only played the campaign so far. How much was the game? Into that. It was 50. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, because it, it, it just was released. Um, but they have every, they have the full Russian lines, the so French So you never lines. played any of these games before? Never. I just, I had seen the trailer and it seemed really cool because the trailer I had seen, it was presented like a news report, like about escalating tensions between these countries. And then you've got the air war and, um, it was just, it was just awesome because, you know, they have the full Russian line, they have the French lines, the American line, British line, uh, German line, like so many different aircraft and they all have different specs you can equip different types of missiles uh to do like depending on your combat like what you're trying to do um it's really quite quite a fantastic game in my opinion it looks pretty cool from what i'm looking at it right now i'm doing the can you run it let's see it says uh yeah, it seems like I can run it. Up. My computer's about a couple years old, but I have a lot of RAM and stuff. So I'll look into seeing if there's a co-op. Like, like you need case. minimum four gigabytes. I think I think a co-op mode. Like uh, I hope it has one. I'll look into it because th- all the campaign missions you're deployed in squadrons, so you have wingmen. They're just AI. So I mm-hmm. I'm hoping maybe it's like oh yeah, jump in with your teammates. But I'll check it out. All right. So next week is Lego. The Lego movie too mm-hmm. all right um I, I have a lot of wrestling stuff going on next weekend so i depending on how it goes i don't know the the episode might be a little late um all right. i mean i'll probably be able to see it sunday if nothing else but all, all right. right so until next week see you guys later all right see, see you. ya Thank you for listening to the Iron Coop Fights Movies. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, review our podcast on iTunes so that we can spread the show around. To contact the show, you can reach us at theironcoop at gmail.com and on Instagram at theironcoop. Join us for another edition of the Iron Coop Fights Movies.